Um, the first item on the agenda is general public comment. Comment not related to any of the proposals before us. There's none. I think that we can start with the presentation of the Rich Street School applicant for playground improvement. So, who will be up? Hello. <coughs> Good evening, my name is Beth Chiquette. I'm the principal at Bridge Street School. And before I get started, I just wanna say that um, this proposal and this application would not have been possible without the support of the Bridge Street community, school and Ward 3 community and others, as well as Michaela O'Brien and Mandy Gary who have really um, helped head this project. So I just wanted to publicly thank them and Michael uh, for the design and for all of our supporters here tonight. So we do have a, a, present, a short presentation for you um, up there. Should I just say like next slide to you? Or, okay, so um, we are here tonight um, for a proposal to rehabilitate the Bridge Street School playground. And you can go ahead for the next slide, please. Sounds like a good one. You can even skip that one. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so the biggest <coughs> concern at Bridge Street is the safety and um, the health risks that our current playground poses um, on our school staff, our students, and the community. Uh, we have a very dusty, unhealthy playground in the fall, summer, in the summer. And in the winter, it is uh, very icy. And in the spring, it is very muddy. There are many times where we have to cancel recess because it's unsafe for the students to be outside. Yesterday was a perfect example. It was too icy and too muddy and we only could allow kids to play on the sidewalk. Um, and we also have um, health risks with the dust. We are not able to open our windows on that side of the building because of the amount of dust that comes into the building uh, that our children and uh, faculty and staff would be breathing in as well as when they are out there running around in it and stirring up the dust even more. Um, and with that comes the, the mess that also comes into the school and um, our custodial staff with the, the cleaning up of, of that. Uh, next slide, please. Can I interrupt you just to say some younger visitors have just come in and if they want to come and sit on the floor in the front. Can I come sit up here, guys? You know what? Come sit next to me, then Mr. Chiquette won't be so nervous. <laughs> 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 So the next couple of slides are just some pictures of the current playground. Those two pictures that are up there are the dirt that you usually see in the fall and the summer. And then on the next slide, you see um, what it looks like in the winter when there is snow and ice. Um, unfortunately, due to, you can go to the next slide, um, please, the budget constraints, the school budget con uh, constraints, we are not able to fund this through um, the school budget and um, so that is why we have applied for the CPA application. We um, understand that we will be raising $35,000 in additional funds um, to help fund this project. Next slide please. Uh, Bridge Street School currently serves around 300 uh, students pre-K through 5. We have 37.8% free and reduced lunch 33.5% of our students are minority and 31.3 students with disabilities. We're in the Ward 3 neighborhood and um, we don't just see ourselves as a school community with a school playground. We see our school as um, an integral part of the downtown community and having access to a healthy and safe playground for the community is really um, important to us. Uh, the next slide is just um, a quote from one of the teachers at, at Bridge Street. Um, if you'd like to read that. Next slide, please. So our proposal, and I don't know, Mandy, if you want to just kind of oh, yeah, sure. show them yeah. um, the design there. It's kind of broken up into three play zones um, with a concrete path that will go around the perimeter which will accommodate our school's walking club and for students who may just want to walk during recess and for community members to walk or ride their bikes. 
Um, Berkshire Design Group has prepared this final um, plan for us, and you um, can see the middle section that I believe is green on that is uh, poured in place um, material that is ADA compliant. And um, I'm sure if you have questions more about the material and the design, um, Michael will be happy to answer those. The next slide is just an aerial view of the Bridge Street School Playground. And the slide after that is the design that Mandy is walking around with. And you will see the pathway on there, the, the area for the poured rubber um, material. Tree, we have um, some trees and picnic tables and benches. Um, a spot for basketball and wall ball for the students, and then some natural elements, um, some logs that are low to the ground for the kids to climb on, and different stub stumps and rock. And the next slide, again, is just another quote from our kindergarten staff. So the benefits of our project, we will be creating a 10,900 square foot new ADA compliant playground um, for our students and community. That will also incorporate garden space for our students to use um, as an outdoor learning area, as well as for the community to enjoy as well. We are also um, looking at putting in a special space on our playground called Marie's Corner. Um, we had a very special colleague of ours who taught at Bridge Street School who passed away in the fall. And we are looking at um, creating an area of the playground in, in her memory. There we go. Thank you. Um, so, uh, you know, I think as I stated earlier, besides benefiting um, the, the students and the faculty and staff at Bridge Street, this project will really benefit the community. Um, the Ward 3 community and the greater downtown community of Northampton. Um, we have many people who like to come in and use the Bridge Street Playground, um, which is great. Um, but I have to say right now it's not a very welcoming playground with the condition that it's in, and we want it to be welcoming. We want people to um, feel like they have a place that is safe and healthy for them to play with their children. And... Um, one more, please. And then there's another quote up there from um, community member and Bridge Street parent. Parents. Um, the thing that is so wonderful about this project is really the amount of support we've um, received from the community. We had over 250 signatures um, on a petition that we did earlier in the year. Um, and it's just really wonderful, um, as you can see tonight, to have students and parents and community members here to really support this project. Um, it really shows how important this is to us and how important the, the health and the safety of our students and surrounding community uh, really is to us. And um, on the next slide, you'll see a list of um, who we have to oh, next one, I'm sorry, um, support from. And then the next slide is just the proposed uh, project dates. So we are anticipating um, if this all goes through with construction being done before the first day of school. And the last slide is just one last quote um, from a Ward 4 counselor in Bridge Street Parent. And I thank you for your time and I will open it up for questions for Mandy and Michaela and myself and Michael. So thank you. Questions? Yeah, a couple of questions. First mm -hmm. I want to say it's great to see this room filled, not only because it keeps us all warm, <laughs> <laughs> because it's just nice to see people in place the concept of CPA and other people would like to use the money for something that's going to help them in their daily lives. Uh, two, I am largely supportive of the project. I do have a couple of questions that kind of stem from the application. Uh, the first one has to do with the piling of the snow on the basketball court. Mm -hmm. uh, and that seems to be the current practice, or at least the past right. practice. 
there been any discussion with the city on the different manner of snow removal so that that snow isn't sitting on top of something that we need to create? We did meet with the mayor and Dave Pomerantz um, early on in this process, and we were told by Dave Pomerantz that there would be no other way to deal with the snow. So that's in part why the section of the new design is a surface, is an asphalt surface that would be able to sort of accommodate <laughs> the salt and sand and snow that ends up there. We we would love to see another another solution to that, the way that the snow is cleared. Um, I, um, my name is Mandy Gray, I'm part of something. Um, I have been out doing recess duty, which is not my usual job the last couple of days, which has been really fun. Um, fun to be with the kids, but fun just to kind of see how the space is really and how it's used. And um, the snow mound is a, is a really, it takes up about half of our playground currently. Um, and I think we are really going to have to figure out how we can uh, maybe, you know, it's a fun place for the kids to play. The kids really enjoy the snow mound. It's, you know, slides and king of the mountain and all that kind of stuff. But we really are going to have to think about, um, I think, trucking away about half the snow. Um, <laughs> they're up there today with me. Um, but just because it does take up so much of our playground space, and it's really not a large playground to start with, and um, when we have this huge amount of snow melting and sitting on the surface, it really prevents kids from being able to use the playground. Um, you know, it's fun for a while, and then it kind of just becomes ice. muddy and ice and dirty, and we've got to keep the kids, you know, away from it and off of it. Um, so I think that will have to be a discussion that we have with the city about, you know, at a certain point, we need to truck the snow away and, and do something like that. So. Um, <clears throat> in your application, it stated that uh, what was in the schematic wouldn't necessarily be fully represented by this budget. Can you identify which of those features would not be covered this round? Uh, they were mostly the uh, additional structures that were on a, what we are calling now the wish list, um, but we do have an update on that, sorry. Um, there are a couple of structures that were drawn in to this design that when we got the price tag for them, we realized that we couldn't come to CPA back for that kind of money. So since, um, since we submitted the application, we have been working with um, Valley Home Improvement on, on um, donating their services because they're looking for a community project. So we are very close. We have a design and, and a sort of a budget of value of how much uh, one or two of these would cost for them to provide for us. Um, I think it's so great to see all you kids out here. This is fabulous. You should be congratulating congratulate yourself for coming out on a school night. <laughs> um, and it's good to be active young and it's good to be active old. So <laughs> keep it up, kids. Uh, the question I have is, it seems a very ambitious timeline to wait for us until you know April and then go out to bid and have it all done before the school year begins again. And it, will you have to raise the 35000 before you go out to bid, the private fundraising? And do you have a plan for that? And how realistic is it to raise $35,000, which is a, a lot of money? Um, I'm really proud to say that we've already raised about $12,000 of that without uh, really actually trying. This is our one page sheet that we will eventually be sending out to people that we anticipate um, donating to us. And um, so as I said, we've raised about $12,000 already. Um, it is ambitious, but we don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's what we're doing. <laughs> That's the plan. Um, and the work, do you want to speak to the timeline of the work, Michael? Um, well, we've already um, endeavored ourselves into preparing a set of drawings that can be handed out to contractors for pricing. So we're not just stuck with this pretty picture. We actually have um, what we consider bid-ready documents to go out. So as soon as we get the word, you know, we're going to uh, solicit, I believe we're solicit, solicit three private bids, or three public bids for this at least, and then um, 
the, the hard part about this is going to be um, probably making sure that any elements um, that are uh, specialty items, such as if we have benches or stuff, those, those have a kind of a long lead time. And that was also a problem with some of the uh, custom structures that we envisioned could be part of this, but we took out um, of the budget. But all the, all the rest of it is basically um, the rubber surfacing, the wood mulch extension of the existing playground, concrete walks and bituminous paving. That's not difficult to install over the course of one summer, certainly not. So we feel that this project can be done um, given the timeline. Um, actually, I made the briefing that was at the school and there were this many people there, uh, particularly from the community. So um, I'm encouraged about the project. Uh, my comments are not really so much for the school as they are for the uh, uh, a desire to coordinate plans between the school playground and Lamprom Park. So my comments are more to the city and the parks department to uh, work with this you're sort of leading in this case you've already you've already come up with a design and I think there's a, an interest uh, to, to coordinate what goes next door so to speak mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the other concern I have is um, the neighborhood uses the school and will be using that part too and I don't think there's even a crosswalk across Bridge Street yeah, right there's, yeah, right there's, there's a school yeah there's okay. a crossing guard there okay school. That's, that was my other question, yeah. to see if, if you had that. Um, and so it's a crossing guard during school hours, and it is and is the uh, crosswalk marking, are they being kept up? No, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's a big okay. sign in the middle they put up when the school is coming in and going out. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. are, there, are there annual maintenance costs for this surface that are different from the, uh, the, the mud grass? If there are, how will that be covered? Um, There's really not much maintenance involved in the surfacing. It's if you would think of the surfacing is very similar to a rubberized track surface. So if it, it, it there is the possibility that it'll get dirty, that it might get worn, but I highly doubt it in this case with, with you know kids running around on it. Um, it, the surfacing stands up incredibly well. Um, I just went and looked at a project down in Agawam that was done seven years ago, and there are no worn spots. There are no splits. The edges are still solid. They haven't come up. They haven't peeled up, which is remarkable considering that it just stops and there's just grass. Yeah. In our design, the rubber surfacing is completely surrounded by concrete walks, so that provides a protective edge. But really, the, the surfacing is incredibly durable and I think all you would really probably want to do is, is sweep it most of the time if, it, if sand or dirt accumulates on it. And, and just as a follow-up, is there substrate work that will allow greater uh, permeability of the ground so that, yes. because it's, it's marvelous for letting water run off right. and, and, and wicking the water out. So that, so for a small rain it looks like it's just a, a no-brainer. Yeah. But, but for soaking, or for you know, this time of year? We, um, um, it, it, the design is actually pitched to two kind of low spots. Okay. So that'll help or um, encourage water to get off of the surface and into the drainage system. Um, we've been in touch with uh, Dave Pomerantz, who uh, submitted some comments with concerns about maintenance and upkeep and that type of thing, and how exactly how we were going to deal with stormwater. And we've gone through. Um, some review with him and provided some responses to his concerns and um, we think that you know this is probably the best solution for this small space that gets just and where does stormwater go from there uh, it actually the, the city had recently uh, a few years ago extended the drain line uh, before there were just infiltration basins underneath here without mm -hmm. an outlet pipe the last um, Infiltration pet basin is here ne next to the existing paving, and they actually provided a drainage pipe that goes around the building, in fact, out to is it which street is that? Graves, Graves. Graves. Graves Avenue. Yeah. So they've actually, um, I, I would say, improved the system so that there is an outlet when. But you can get gravity flow from that. That's right. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Right. <coughs> Thank you for the afternoon.
So the next item is public comment on specific proposals. Um, uh, Jim, as a civic lesson, could you perhaps explain to some of our younger attendees how the process works at this point? So that, <laughs> Thank you. Could you express your own thanks for that for attending? I need to see them stay full of them. So you want me to tell them who we are? And, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, perhaps just also uh, the, the, if they wanted to, they're, they and the parents could. They can escort their parents home now. <laughs> So we take your parents' money <laughs> and give it back to you. <laughs> so we're the Community Preservation Committee. We, um, we make recommendations to the City Council. We do not award money. We just make recommendations. The City Council decides whether and how to spend 3% surcharge on property taxes. Um, we have representation on both uh, elected, um, and we have elected representatives, we have someone from the Housing Authority, we have someone from the Recreation Committee, we have someone appointed by the Mayor, we have, sorry, appointed by the City Council, um, myself, uh, I'm from the Conservation Commission, um, Deb Bruce is from the Planning Commission, and so the, the design of the statute was to bring together uh, people with knowledge from all different parts of the city government, um, as well as people that you vote for for three-year terms, um, four-year terms, four-year terms like the president, um, and as well as people who are both appointed by the city council and appointed by um, the mayor. So um, this is now our public comment portion key to specific proposals. Um, I'm going to ask by a show of hands, how many people are here to speak to a proposal other than the Bridge Street School proposal? Okay, so... Um, so what I'd like to do then um, is allow, since that's just a handful of people, um, it looks like, could we have the Housing Support Services um, application present now, um, a public comment on that proposal if you step forward? Caldwell. I'm the director of the Housing Consumer Education Center at HAP Housing. We provide services to families in Hampshire and Hamden County. And I'm here in full support of the funding for the application to uh, create a position, the Community Housing Support Manager, which would provide assistance to families in low income and subsidized housing in order to help them retain their tenancy and uh, keep them out of the housing court. I think it would be beneficial for the community to uh, have that person provide educational uh, component in terms of budgeting. Many of the families that become homeless uh, have enough income to, to pay for their housing, but they run into trouble when they perhaps get a paycheck once a month and aren't able to sort of allocate that over what needs to be taken care of on a monthly basis in terms of their rent. So. Um, I think that it would also be nice to have uh, somebody work proactively for them to uh, per perhaps steer them to resources in the community, such as the Tenancy Preservation Program, uh, community legal advocates. They could also educate them about what it means when you get a 14-day notice and what you really need to do to preserve your tenancy and to keep out of housing court and avoid eviction. So I think it would be a great investment in the community it would stabilize housing. I think that you would see a measurable outcome immediately in terms of people staying out of housing court, people maintaining their units. It's difficult enough for people to find low income and subsidized housing. And if they can um, have some stability and some support in maintaining those units, I think it's beneficial both to the community and to the families. So I would uh, urge you to support that funding and I would look forward to working collaboratively with that person in that position. So thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Good evening folks. My name is Tom O'Connor. I'm actually the attorney for the Northampton Housing Authority. I've uh, served in that role for 15 years or so now. The last 10 or so I've been their general counsel. One of the many things I do for them is handle their evictions. And there are 
hundreds and hundreds of them over the last 10, 15 years that I've, I've handled for them. The vast majority of them, I'd say 95% of them are non-pay evictions. Uh, and thankfully, the vast majority of them do not end in an eviction. Unfortunately, they do end up going back to court month after month after month for month for a loosely supervised uh, court agreement. And, and most of the tenants thankfully pay off what they owe and their tenancy is reinstated. But I'd like to tell people we're the housing authority, we're not the unhousing authority. Our goal is not to evict people. Um, and a program like this, I think, is going to do wonders. I'm here to, on behalf of the housing authority to offer our wholehearted support for it. I think what they're going to do is step in at a time that is most needed, at a time when the tenant is first starting to lose control of their ability to pay their rent. Not after they've already been to court and they're with me. Um, they're going to step in and offer, offer their services, offer their, um, their guidance with respect to prioritizing the tenant's uh, monthly bills. You see that many, many times where the tenant has a fixed income and what ends up happening is they start to pay uh, bill B uh, instead of bill A, which is their rent. Uh, and then they bill, pay bill C, D, and E, and all of a sudden there's no money left for their rent, and um, they're stuck on the, the Ferris wheel that brings them to the, court, the courthouse, unfortunately. So this program is going to offer some supervision, some guidance. Uh, it's going to offer the steering, uh, I think, some tenants to some of the, the many programs that are out there. And tenants, frankly, don't know are out there, A or B, when they do land there, they don't have the wherewithal to properly go through the application process to access the funds that may be there um, to, uh, to pay off, off their, uh, the, the amount, the arrearage that's owed. So I think the program's going to be wonderful. Um, from a purely self-interested point of view, um, it may take a lot of my business away. Uh, but frankly, mm -hmm. there's a lot of other things for me to do over at the Housing Authority. And um, I would welcome the opportunity to spend more time doing some of the other things rather than, um, um, you know, bringing people to court, uh, frankly, a lot of times needlessly. So I think this program will do a lot to eliminate that. And again, I'd urge you to support the funding for the program. Thank you. If I can ask you a quick question. We heard a very impressive presentation from the applicants last mm -hmm. time. Very, uh, um, very thoughtful. And um, one of the questions I asked was about a, a metric of looking at the success of, of this uh, project. And it was suggested that seeing a decline in the uh, eviction rate here in Northampton over an annual basis might be one metric. Is that is that a reasonable thought for you? Um, absolutely. And it, it, it de would depend entirely how you define eviction. Um, eviction as in someone that's actually you know, physically removed from the apartment or eviction as someone who never comes to me for the purpose of filing a complaint with either the district court or the housing court. That's a needless expense for a tenant. It's $135 at the housing court, $195 in district court. And many of those filings that come to me, which are eviction cases, uh, get worked out. I'd say 95 plus percent of them get worked. And I think a fair measure of the success would be how many never actually come to me for that purpose, as well as an actual drop in the number of folks that are and that's a collected evicted. that's a collected data. I mean, you you would be able to oh absolutely know yeah about absolutely that a year from now. Yes, we keep uh, you know right down to the number of the number of it's called a notice to quit. That is the the document that gets served on a tenant by it doesn't have to be served by the sheriff, but uh, sometimes it is. We usually do not serve it that way, and that says the tenant has 14 days to leave or we're going to court to collect this rent. And that's what we always do. We go to court to collect the rent, and the process has begun. But I think a, a very good measure would be, of those 14-day notices to quit, how many of them are steered to this program and never actually come to me? That would be the best measure, I right. suggest. Thank you. Thank you. Community Legal Aid in Northampton. Among other things, CLA aims to prevent homelessness by helping indigent individuals and families gain access to affordable housing programs and defend themselves against eviction. On CLA's behalf, I would like to voice my support for the Community Housing Supportive Services Project. 
As part of the Housing Court Intervention Project, I provide limited assistance representation to low-income tenants facing eviction in Northampton and Greenfield. I advise tenants negotiate agreements and advocate for them before the judge. Often in eviction cases, tenants need extra help following through with the terms of their agreements, especially with payment plans and rep payees. Legal aid attorneys oftentimes do not have the resources to assist clients with the case management aspect of the, of the case once the legal issue has been resolved. If a tenant is working with a social worker, they are often fo focused on the mental health problems of the tenant and don't have the knowledge of housing issues necessary to assist the tenant with maintaining his or her tenancy. A community housing support manager that is focused on housing issues would be a tremendous asset to tenants in Northampton. There is currently a gap in services for tenants regarding financial literacy and budget counseling. Tenants currently benefit greatly from the Tenancy Preservation Project that is in the Western Housing Court, and it is helpful for legal aid attorneys to collaborate with mental health professionals from TPP to address the mental health aspects of why a tenant may be facing eviction. If there was a community housing support manager focused on addressing the financial issues surrounding eviction, tenants would have a greater chance at solving the problems that brought them into housing court on a deeper level. This would bring about lasting change in a tenant's life and perhaps avoid future non-payment eviction cases. I had a case where I represented a tenant in an eviction action who also had a Section 8 voucher. After months of court hearings, motions, and a Section 8 hearing, I was able to maintain the tenancy in the eviction case and prevent the termination of the tenant's Section 8 benefits. Part of the negotiation in both the Section 8 case and the eviction case was that the tenant's mother be named the official representative payee. Once the case was over, as the housing attorney, I not only gave the tenant information to set up the rep payee, but also felt compelled to keep checking in to see that it was actually set up because the tenant and her mother found the process challenging. If there was a community housing support manager working with the tenant in a situation like this to set up a rep payee, it would help to ensure that the legal victories in housing court are sustained once tenants leave the courtroom. Thank you very much. Hi, how are you? I'm Wanda Rallone. I'm Director of Shelter and Housing Programs for ServiceNet. I actually work with homeless individuals after the fact as well as before. I'm here to support the Northampton Housing Partnership in applying for the Community Preservation Act funds uh, in hopes that uh, it will help our community members maintain their housing. I was fortunate enough to be able to apply for the Community Preservation Funds last year for first, last, and security funds to help them move in because that was an issue that was um, very hard for folks just to come up with that kind of money. And it's important that once they're in their housing, now what do we do to help them keep, uh, maintain their housing? And this is a great project to really have somebody to help them to work on those budgets, work on whatever it is that they need to be able to maintain that before they go through eviction. Because what happens is in working with the homeless folks, they get housed, life happens, lose jobs, family gets ill, they get ill, something always happens, something comes up, and there's nowhere to find any supports like this. So at least it gets them to keep their place and not have to end up back in the homeless shelters. Um, we can continue that process with them. So this is a great thing. Um, it doesn't look like on this round that we'll be uh, in a competitive nature between projects, but we often are. And um, so you're, this is the perfect opportunity to ask you the hypothetical question of if it were last round and we were talking to you about the first last uh, arrangement or it's this round and we're talking about counseling services, which one seems most valuable to you? I, they both are valuable in their own way. Um, it's really hard for me to say, but of course, maintaining housing. I mean, the, the fact is we have to get them housed first right. and then work on keeping them in there. And so they're both just as equal to me. I'm sorry to put you on the spot. But uh, no, that's fine. No, they, they actually, it, they actually it, come it, in. They complement each other. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Well, excuse me, can I ask a follow-up question? Oh, 
the others in the room who are specialists in this field would also help, but I've found this presentation for this type of service to be enormously compelling, and, and I can see why it's being asked for. Um, is this, it also seems to be core. I mean, it seems to be that so common sense, so essential, that, that it's a shame that, that an application is having to be made to the CPA in order to fund it as, a, as, a, as, a, as an add-on. Is there, is there some way that this, could, this kind of counseling uh, or assistance or is, could not be made more permanent as perhaps a, a, a part of the cost of doing business if you, if you operate um, uh, low-income housing here in the city? Uh, because, uh, of course, the individual being served in, in, in this in this housing need the kind of exactly the kind of counseling that we're talking about, and and it's um, uh, it's a shame that you're even having to be here. <laughs> it is a shame, and just uh, really quickly on our end, we work off everything is off of grants and whatever we can get our hands on, and that's just been really tough. But, um, so but, but for the long term, I mean, is there some? Um, maybe Tony can answer it. Some, some uh, systematic way to address them. It's, I think Wanda sort of nailed it, and I know we talked about this last week, that it's, um, it's really what DHCD says you can spend money on is what you can spend money on. So it's not an allowable item in your annual operating budget. And so you can cover the cost of a property manager, but property management sort of an all day, every day, you don't know what's coming up. So the idea that you could set aside some headspace and some, do some planning and intensive work is just, it's another body. So it's not, I agree with you that it would be nice that that would be allowable, but things have really been cut and cut and cut and cut. And we're just at the place where actually my agency can't afford a property manager. We have one person doing two jobs. So um, it's, it, it, you're, you're pointing out a, a clear problem yeah. that is in the system. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Further public comment on the Housing Support Services Program. <coughs> okay, in that case, um, we'll move on to the Playground Christian School. Um, good evening, CPA Board, and anyone who was nice enough to support the Bridge Street School new playground proposal. My name is Megan O'Connor. And I'm Neve Ridley. I live at 75 Park Hill Road in Florence, Massachusetts. And I live at 36 Wilson Ave. I am a fourth grade student at Bridge Street School. I think it's a great school full of great teachers and students, but I think there should be an improvement on our playground. One reason I think, she, I, I think we should get a new playground is the lack of exercise you get every day. In the winter, it gets very icy, so we have to close off the play structure and various parts around it. So we get clumped in a small area in the middle where there's not enough room to run around. So we are very energetic in the afternoon, which makes it hard for us to learn. Another reason that I think we should get a new playground is the dust. On windy days, there are dust storms that blow into kids' eyes, nose, and mouth. That's a big problem because kids are inhaling dust and it's getting in other kids' eyes. I remember when I was in first grade, kids would run away from the dust screaming sandstorm. Then we would hide under the play structure to protect our eyes and mouth from the dust. If we had a new playground with a better surface like grass or tarp, kids would not be inhaling dust. Another problem with the playground is the ice. Many people, even teachers, have been slipping on the ice on their way into the school, which makes them late for school because they have, they have to go to the nurse to change their clothes. Also, kids fall and hit their heads a lot because there is not enough room for a playground for kids to run around without bumping into people. So many kids get hurt. These are some reasons I think we should do new playground. Thank you, and we hope you support this proposal. Hathaway. I live at 32 Northern Avenue in Northampton, um, and uh, my late wife, Marie Hirschwitz, is actually the Marie that Marie's Corner is being built in memory of. Uh, she worked at Bridge Street School for 12 years and really enjoyed it and loved the kids there and loved the people she worked with. Uh, and I remember having conversations with her 
over many years about the importance of recess as part of the educational process for kids to be able to get out and run some energy off um, to be able to balance their physical need, activity needs with their mental activity needs um, and to have a really functional and what looks to me to be a great playground, something that will be uh, use, usable more of the year, um, even when it's raining, even when it's snowing. Uh, it looks like a great project, um, and it's got a lot of creative aspects to uh, things. For So there are different things for kids to do. Um, of course, one of the, the things Murray particularly would have uh, enjoyed is the climbing uh, structure here. Murray was an avid rock climber, and this is so also very uh, relevant for her in that. The other thing, as a 35-year resident of uh, Ward 3, I wanted to say that w we think of the Bridge Street School as a community resource as well as just a school. We're, all, we're proud of it. We're glad there's a school there. Uh, and my children, our friends' children, have all played in the playground over the years. And to have, again, to have something that's more functional, that's got more uh, positive aspects to it, would be a wonderful addition to Ward 3, as well as the school. Um, so I encourage you to approve this project. Thank you. And uh, we're very excited about uh, the all the kids that have showed up here. And again, I wanted to thank uh, Mandy and uh, Beth and everybody else that have done so much work on this. Thank you. Thank you. I'm uh, Dr. Melvin Herskovich. My daughter Marie taught at the Bridge Street School for 12 years before her untimely death last November. She would often tell me how pleased she was to see the spontaneous friendships which develop among the children in the playground as they enhance their physical skills their self-confidence grew, their friendships became strengthened, and that was reflected back in the classroom where she was also an expert in remedial teaching for children with problems in reading and mathematics. This is a wonderful project, and I urge the community committee to give serious consideration <coughs> to funding it as far as the $35,000 is concerned, I have spoken with friends and other family members who have assured me they would come forth with whatever additional support is needed to reach that sum if it is a prerequisite for granting the application. Thank you. Hi, I'm Patty Healy. I'm from 21 Longfellow Drive and Ward 6. And my kids went to Bridge Street School about 20 years ago, uh, at least a generation ago. I had three daughters, Maria, Michaela, and Sophia Torog. And some of their teachers are here, which is wonderful, a new principal. And, um, and I'm here because um, 22, 20 years ago, so the PTO with, uh, and myself involved, we tried to rehab the playground. And I, it's astounding to think that a generation has gone by and that we they're talking about the same problems that we saw. Um, you know, a, tr a giant tree fell, a dead tree fell in the middle of the playground. Thank God no one was killed. And you might remember that. Um, and uh, it was a, it, it, Mr. Zimmer, Zimmerman, who works for the city, and when his wife passed away, she was very active in the building of the playground. Um, we planted a tree, but we had to go through this enormous process to plant the tree outside of the edge of the playground because we, and we didn't really have a space where we could put the tree when we did that in her honor. And that was about 15, 16 years ago. I don't even remember. But I wanted to mention that kids um, and families who use that space are from three wards. And, you know, Ward 6 is across town, and we all have used that space and will continue to do that. And the space, I'm here to talk about more about the community use of the playground. And uh, parents, um, not only parents of Bridge Street School kids, but parents can meet and talk and have a space where they can ha have meeting time and talking time. Grandparents were often there with their children. That's a space for 
um, seniors, families, community people. It's a place where Ward 6 and Ward 3 families can meet and um, you know, share the, the um, kind of outdoor pleasures that a lot of other um, places don't offer for those two wards. Um, you know, I think that um, an open space that we can preserve and build is something that many wards can use. Just like years ago when, um, um, oh, what's the name of the school? The one with the big, big playground. Jackson Street. <laughs> Jackson Street built their playground. You saw people from all over the city who were there, and you could meet people <coughs> and talk to people, and you know, it's a real good coming together space. And um, as someone who's watched this for years and years, I'm very impressed with the work that's gone into it. Um, I just think it's a benefit for the community. It's, a, it's an enormous benefit for several wards and for kids who come from an, uh, more of an urban space and kids who come from big middle class neighborhoods with big yards to meet together and like share the benefits of living in Northampton. I think this does a wonderful job of doing that. Thanks. Um, good evening. My name is Karen Nelson. I live at 110 Florence Street in Leeds, and I'm here to support the proposed improvements to the Bridge Street Playground. My family has been part of the Bridge Street community for five years. I have two children in fourth grade and a child in first grade. Research shows undeniably that children need opportunities to play in order to advance their social, emotional, and cognitive development. Play is where they learn self-control, how to cope with stress, and develop problem-solving skills. With it essentially reduced or eliminated in our elementary school curriculum, play has been relegated to once-a-day recess. So if recess is the only time for children to play in a six-hour school day, then they need an outdoor space that is engaging and stimulating and promotes imaginative play. Um, my children are a little shy to come up here and talk, so I asked them each to give me a quick little sentence that paraphrases their current playground. My son Aiden says, I am just tired of the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Dalton says that the playground is not safe. And you're not shy, do you want to say it? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Finn. The playground needs swings in months. And a monkey <laughs> <laughs> So I hope um, that with our support today that the CPA not only sees our request for what it is, but a community project, community building project, but seriously considers the immediate and the long-term impact that this project will have on our community. Thank you. My name is Jerry Budger. I live at 127 Bridge Street, which is right across from the school. I'm a neighbor, and I guess I'm afraid to have to say it. Miss Choquette may have to admit to it, but I'm a former student at Bridge Street. So. <laughs> um, I want to second everything that's been said. I'm also former president of the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association at, until last October. This is a project that has been of great interest to the association. We followed it, and I believe there was an endorsement that came from it. Um, we are really proud of our part of the city. Ward 3 is, is undergoing enormous amount of renewal. A lot of young families, as you can see here, are moving in with their children, investing a lot of money into updating and modernizing their homes and their businesses. And the Bridge Street School playground is a blot on what we hope to achieve in terms of renewing the, our ward. Um, I can look out my window on a windy day. It looks like the grapes of wrath are going after the oaks. <laughs> I see kids coming covered in mud on wet days. It's really unsafe. It's really unpleasant to look at. And it really is something that needs to be taken care of. And I certainly hope that you folks will endorse this project. And you can be assured that I will be speaking to city councilors to approve the project. Um, if you folks do, and it's long overdue, and I hope you'll give it your support. Thank you.
we're happy to have you stay. <laughs> and educate yourself on the on the process. Um, however, if bedtime calls. Can I just say one word before everybody goes? Yeah. Um, I just this is just so incredibly wonderful to see all of you here. Um, it's su it's been such a long journey since the beginning of thinking about this as um, people who were here 20 years ago can attest to that. And um, I just I thank all the teachers for coming tonight. I know you've been at school all day long already, and I really appreciate you being here. And the families for coming out with your children tonight. Melvin and Steve, thank you so much for being here. Um, let's make this happen. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Oh. opportunity for Northampton to uh, benefit from the state grant uh, that came on and through the help of the Office of Planning and Development it, it's just a wonderful opportunity and for both locations at Lamprin Park Park and as well as at um, the Florence Field um, I'm a member of the Recreation Commission I have been for 23 years um, I was also a, a teacher in Northampton for 33 years. So I'm in support of both of these projects um, under the one application. Uh, I think it's a, a great opportunity to uh, enhance what we are already doing at the Florence Fields. Um, I've been here before um, as a member of the Bean Farm Task Force and um, I'm uh, very appreciative of the money that the CPC has provided for um, not just the Northampton Recreation Department but the, for the whole community to um, have these fields developed into two baseball fields and uh, five multi-purpose fields and we're going to have generations of soccer players and baseball players and lacrosse players and other sports there for, for years to come and and their grandparents and their families and their siblings and this one uh, recreation area, the little playground area, um, will be a great amenity for the overall project. And um, again, I'm grateful for the, the financial support we've had in the past and we are actively um, fundraising to help with other amenities, but this will give us a huge boost and we hope for your support. Thank you. Question? Uh, and I apologize, I wasn't here the last meeting, so if this was answered. The, the $200,000 state grant that you're going for, that that, that requires a uh, this 50,000 match, is that, is that correct? Yeah. That's, yeah. Yes, it does. Anne Marie, yes, that's true. And that, and uh, but that's that has not come in yet, correct? The you, the, the state has um, indicated that we will get the grant. Yes, yes, yep. And we have to come up with a with the the match, which is the fifty thousand. Okay, thank you. Yep. Hey, could, can I ask a question? Yeah. I'm sorry. Sure. Sorry. I waited till you're almost. Yeah. Yes, I turn around. Uh, are there uh, are there follow-up or recurring costs that that are not included or covered by this grant that you'll have to cover in the future and are you prepared to cover those um this grant at both locations lamprin park which will absolutely enhance what um the, the um, project that was just pre presented to you um will um enhance that and then at florence fields it will start the 
um, part of the process for the large area. There, we want to do things for multiple ages. So in the future, there will be things that the fundraising group is going to be doing to add to it. And then for taking care of the, part, the um, playgrounds and things, all of them in the city, well, they're either taken care of by the DPW's uh, Park and Cemetery Division or the School Department's Division. So um, both of them will be in good hands for... And they've indicated that we're willing to... Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Yep. In, in, is there a, do you have a status on the Vets Field project? I, I know the recognition yes. has several open yes, projects. Yes, that all is of them going off the bid next week. Okay. Yes. Yeah. It is uh, the, the um, contract was just signed with Berkey Designs for the um, bid process and getting that, and that's ready to go. So. We were intrigued by the material that was shown, the for surface material. Yes. For the it looks like it, it also could form to ADA hand, um, a wheelchair mm -hmm. uh, access as well. Is that yeah, right? it's really cool. They had a lot of different parks will put put those in in different areas for the reasons that they're talking about. And the durability mm -hmm. is yeah. as good as they say. Yeah, from what I've seen, I haven't we haven't put any in. This will be it, the first one I think in Northampton. So, but uh, across the state, people have them. So we just had a conference last week, and, and different um, parks have have used them. So it doesn't. It also doesn't seem to crater the way yeah. uh, loose material does. Right. So oh, is yeah. that usable around play structures directly instead of the... Uh yep, there's all different, yeah, they, they place it around in different ways. I don't know if they actually put it, the play structures right on top of it or if they, you know, form a area that it goes inside Presumably and then it's around it. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure about that. But there's a, they're talking about one that's just a, a, you know, solid area without actual structures going on top of it right now. Their mm -hmm. structures are going to go around it. You at all concern, we talked about this a little bit last yep. week in terms of Lanterfern Park. We're, we're now potentially increasing the use by putting in some structures. So, mm -hmm. you know, driving by the last couple of days, that tends to get flooded out in yep. February, March, April. So, we're potentially reducing grading and eventually. Yeah, we are actually just there. Um, we had a meeting in planning yesterday with the designers and went down there and looked at where it is right now because maybe it was you that mentioned it, the, the spot, some of them. And we won't be able to do a ton in the whole area, but certainly we're, we're trying to, and we'll work with the school and meet with them where potentially swings could go and um, the, what kind of fence and things like that, but like where the swings would go or any kind of other kind of structures or um, um, little climbing things would, would be somewhere that we'd definitely grade out and, and work with that. We found where there's some um, areas that have drainage structures in them so that they, they've already kind of looked at that and said, oh, great, we can drain that way if we pitch it that way. And yeah, absolutely. Okay. And then the other yeah. part of that question would be in terms of inviting more use. Mm -hmm. Going to see replicated the same issues that they had at the school when they start getting the dirt and non sustainable grass. Right now it's kind of like a nice open space people might play frisbee, but it's not an accurate. Yeah, it won't. It's not going to be the whole entire area. Um, the, the money, I mean, that would take you know, tons and tons of. Um, what we're talking about is some smaller sections. So they would grade out and put down the the material, which is usually some kind of um, wood wood carpet. Sometimes it's called. Um, they would put that down underneath the structure or whatever goes up. Say, say it says swings goes up. That would be there. So that wouldn't. And, and as long as you keep throwing more of that material in there each year, usually maintenance usually does that at all of our playgrounds um, each year so that or when someone calls and says it's gotten down too low and they go and they'll fill it in at the schools and different play structures around town so yep good evening uh, my name is Jay Talbot I'm a resident of uh, Pine Street Florence and I just wanted to sort of veer off topic and talk about playgrounds for a little bit um, in my support um, father of two daughters and um, very excited about this this project uh, in Florence and Florence Fields, and, and when I kind of looked at it, um, I really think that the, the finishing touch that it needs is that playground. And I think I'm definitely speaking on behalf of my six-year-old, who uh, is often brought along to her older sister's sporting events. So I know the the uh, the importance and magic that a playground can can bring in these type of events. So. Just want to know I'm a, I'm a resident there, uh, very excited about the project, and I, and I really thank you for your, your time and, and your consideration. Thank you.
to begin consideration, I guess what we usually do is get our financial update so we have a sense of available funds that could be expended during this round. Sir, could you tell us how that will work in terms of, I know that we tend to go back and forth between having things reported on a fiscal year basis, and of course we run on a calendar year basis, that things important. Is that, is that 861 figure <coughs> taking into account so the this entire year? Or is that no, year? so this no. is the leftover from this fiscal year. Okay. So we will be uh, the first of the uh, July, yes. Right? So we um, we get money on a per month basis and right. taxes come in. So we, we may not actually have this all available right now. So if we spend everything, we may be negative spending. Mm -hmm. But we have about the same available as we, there is requested this year. And what would we anticipate through the next state match that would carry us through the, the next funding round? I have no idea. So the Community Preservation Coalition is working to do the same sort of deal that they did last time right. and increase the match, but that may not be successful. So it could be as low as that 20%. Um, Sarah, I understood from the meeting I missed, which I apologize about, that there's a possibility that the uh, open space acquisition uh, is going to be withdrawn because no. Uh, so I spoke to Wayne today, and although he hasn't addressed as far along with this acquisition as he has with others that he's brought forward, he's still pretty confident that he can work out a deal and want, we'll still want it to move forward. But if it falls through, then he just returns the money at that point. Uh, uh, working on a deal at the same amount of money? Yes. So working on a deal at the appraised. At the appraised. At the appraised. At the appraised. Right. He's not, it's not, he can't go over the appraised value. So, so, but they didn't walk away right away. No. Okay. All right, so then our typical, so can I just ask a question about the yeah. funding, Sarah? Sure. I, one would be, it would be really helpful at some point to either have spend a dedicated portion of our meeting with either Sarah or John mm -hmm. walking us through that chart. And part of us, we're responsible for the multi-million dollar budget. Right. It would be really good to fully understand how things go in, how things come out, and when we get these reports and someone says, you got this much money to spend, what that truly means. I'm still confused. Is the 851 uh, split from what we had last time? It is, yeah. So that's, what was that's what's remaining. Okay. From so if we take a two-cycle right. round, this is the remainder, as opposed to if we have 851 for the year and this so this, this is the end of that. So we that's the, that's the, that's the disjoint the between the fiscal year and the yeah. and, and, yeah. and, yeah. and, and as far as the overview, <coughs> we could do that anytime. We could do it before we complete this funding round, or we could wait. I'd be happy to do that anytime. Well, I mean, I guess it's helpful to do it before we make an award. It might be helpful just because that this large amount that we seem to have is, I think, in large part due to the match going from in the 20s up to about 60 percent. And so if, in fact, I, I guess I would like to see two projections, one assuming for the next match period that we receive back down into the 20s, because mm -hmm. that might affect our behavior now. And then the other would be to make an optimistic projection. So um, you know, certainly to expend all this and then have the match drop Say, oh, we have more than, you know, more than enough. It's pretty fund. easy. You just cut four hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> well, I, I guess it's um, yes. Um, but the piece I caught that I had not quite understood because it was—I I never liked the sort of 
vagary of we don't exactly know. And I didn't realize you were taking in your tax monies monthly and that uncertainty on the income from that is part of the I don't know. So even that little bit of news just now was good for me. Sure. Yeah, I, anytime you want to, I mean, I can do a PowerPoint. Okay. Um, so it could be also, um, we had last year a summary of how much we've spent in each category. And I was wondering whether we could just get that updated, you know, how much we spent in housing, how much we spent in the store, how much we spent. Oh, or the spreadsheet that John sent around has that. Uh, oh, it was in, in, in the last one? The amount and also it's the leverage and that's been updated. If you go into the spreadsheet, it has different sheets. Oh, 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 okay. Sheet. And so it would have over a cumulative number for everything we spend for housing. Right. Oh, okay. So over so what time frame? <coughs> so Absolutely. this is cumulative through the last one in there. Cumulative since CPA money started? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do we have anything coming out of cycle in terms of debt? <coughs> anything that we can pay out of cycle? Mean? I, I don't know. Payment cycle. Anything that we paid off. You mean that we are retiring? Yeah. Uh, Forbes is on this one. But what? Florence Fields is just showing up with one of them. That has been anticipatory notes. Florence Fields is going out now? Yes. I mean, to a long term bond. It has been anticipatory notes until, until they could roll it up with a bunch of other projects. And how much was Forbes? Forbes was. And retiring soon means when? Really? Yeah, but what what is that? We may I think we just made the last Forbes payment. Hmm. on the projects? Um, yes. And that we might talk about doing that differently than at the 10 o'clock hour? Yeah, I, I, I talked to the counselor about this um, and my thought was that when we have, um, just in my experience at the Conservation Commission, when we do an order of conditions to the Conservation Commission, conditions. When, you, when you make the motion to issue an order of conditions, <coughs> We don't say, well, let's issue an order of conditions for this project, and everyone votes yes. And then later on, we all come up with conditions for the developer. If that doesn't work. So I would say that our procedure should be the same. If you have a condition that you that is necessary for you to vote for the project, then it needs to be part of the motion. And so the motion would include voting money and any conditions you feel necessary. Minor or major. Um, and again, um, I don't think we have any need to streamline the language we pass on to the city council. In fact, city council has expressed more information, not less. So, if our motion needs to be long and it needs to have extensive and tr be translated into extensive whereas clauses, then why not? I think that's a better way of 
I think it's also come up in the past that people have voted for projects with some conditions attached. And then later, when we've gone back to drafting contracts, people have actually voted against the motion to approve the contract because the contract had a condition attached. So, there, you know, so then you wonder, how would their vote have been changed on the initial recommendation if that condition had been brought up? So um, I guess our, if we're done with the budget update, what we usually do now is just quickly go through, um, give our 30-second um, thoughts so that we can have something to um, take into account as we go and complete our ranking sheet. But I would also say, come, you know, when you come back with your ranking sheets, come back ready, come back with a motion ready, um, both the funding amount and specific conditions that you would attach. Can I just add yes. one thing? In terms of the ranking sheet, maybe it would be helpful if, in addition to ranking it and giving any comments, that if people are aware of any conditions they would like to. That way, if we get a right. royal in the discussion, maybe Sarah can say someone raised this, someone raised that, or if one of us is absent for some reason for voting, at least their condition can be considered. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I mean, I'm always one for actually forcing people to write the actual language that they wish to have on the recommendation, rather than just say, I want a condition about monitoring, okay, because that then forces you to all respond to something that's not very definite. So yeah, I would, I would, you know, in that notes section that we usually have, Sarah, we want to mm -hmm. you know, expand that, so yes. your notes would include this, mm -hmm. as, be as specific as you can, maybe modified when you get here, but again, as, <coughs> as they said, it gives us something to go from if you're not here, and it also gives um, people ability to think about it um, more specifically and craft their responses accordingly. So. And you want that when, sir? Uh, for the next meeting. I'll send them out and then I'll send them copies. And, and the day of the next meeting is what you're giving me? Yeah. All right, so without further ado, if we're ready, we can proceed to um, just our evaluations. Housing supporting services. Devin, I'll start with you. Um. <coughs> summarize the whole set in 30 seconds. I, I like all the projects. The only one I have any question about is the grandstand preservation. I like it a lot. I uh, don't, I, I want to make sure that we are dealing with the historic preservation project, not a, not something different. And so that's the only one that I've even got any thoughts about. But I like, um, um, I, I know it feels a little awkward to have Christopher Heights coming back to us again. But my reaction is I liked it last time. I understand why they're coming back, and, and, and I like it again. I certainly like the housing council. Um, I was I was cool on that one until I really understood that it mm -hmm. seems to make a difference. I mean, I, I was more like, are we just staffing a person? What can they do? But I think we've heard from um, people who really know their business in that area. Um, obviously, the playgrounds. Um, I, I think the parks department has you know, grant money that we need to leverage, you know, so that's, that's my take on the whole set, actually. My comment take on Devin, um, on the issue of the historic, uh, the preservation of the grandstands, um, the phrase I use is, is, we're not here to support, um, seeding renewal, uh, but we are, which is what they're after and which we understand and might, will be a, a, a very reasonable exercise uh, for them, but our, our primary effort is for the, 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 the uh, preservation of the overall envelope of the building and its, uh, you know, its exterior and, support and structural uh, integrity. Uh, and that we welcome, I would welcome a more detailed uh, application describing that. Um, but um, uh, I'm, I'm in favor, obviously, of the, uh, the, the Playground uh, that we that, uh, discussed tonight, and as well as the one on uh, Lawrence Fields. Um, I'm clearly I um, uh, think the uh, housing uh, counselor is a, is a great idea, um, 
and uh, in the open area, open space area too. So I'm, I'm in favor of all all of that funding. Okay. Um, so I know that we take care. I just want to make sure that when we do this, so the survey in Rocky Hill. My reaction is we need to do it at some point, and we can now. So. Yeah. And David, that would be as well. Yeah. Um, voting block here. Brian. So you want us to do what they're doing? Well, what you, don't, you don't, don't feel that has blown my attempt to allow us yeah. to all hear our considered, you know, input. We wish to retain <coughs> the usual method. Oh, what do you guys think? <laughs> I think I think if you're given an opportunity to voice, you know, this that just go so projects so now. Okay. So them, we're all done. Flow. Well, I think the biggest problem facing the world is overpopulation. <laughs> Having playgrounds <laughs> encourages people to have children. You know it's pretty safe, right? And, uh, <laughs> and I'm opposed to anything that brings kids out on school nights. Um, I'm kidding, kidding. <laughs> the, the only thing that I, um, I shouldn't quite, and again, forgive me for not being here, so I shouldn't even ask questions, but the community housing thing, I, I don't get how we fund someone where there's no organization in place to do it. I don't, that seems like we're putting the cart before the horse. Shouldn't there be someone who's willing to take this person in and supervise them? I think they're asking me for $5,000 a year for that that uh, goes for the administration it seems really low to me. I mean, I don't understand how we just fund sort of this idea of someone somewhere. And um, as much as important as it seems, and the, and the folks were really compelling. But again, I I guess I would need more uh, input on that. Um, I've never understood Christopher Heights. I, I never will. And I, I just can't grasp how we're now giving more money to it because I, I never understood it to begin with. And now they've pulled out this whole thing that I was trying to grasp my brain around. I'm still um, unclear as to what the money actually does. But again, my fault. I missed the meeting. Um, the grandstand also, I'm less enthusiastic about uh, but, you know, both of the playground ones, the open space acquisition, um, the, the, uh, are, I'm very excited about. And the survey? The survey, yeah, uh, I would, I would not prioritize that. If we had the money, I think it's great. Otherwise, it, it could be put, it could be put off. I think it, it would be last on my list. I miss the meeting also, Brian, so I'm there with you in regard to the civil uh, support services project. I'm sure they did a really good job last meeting as well. I just have a hard time getting my head around funding a position. I mean, I think if you go to any social service agency and say, you know, what, what position would you like, you know, what, what, what are your needs? They could come up with 10 different positions if we could fund them, that would better serve the community, better you know do their job, help them do their jobs. Just don't. I don't see where it's really CPA money that should be lined up to do that. You know that's part of it. The second part is is it a short term fix? You know if we if we fund it for three years, can they tell us exactly how that is going to be funded following that? And I understand if you give it a one year, who are you going to get to do that job and how qualified are you going to be and Obviously, they're going to do a better job the second year that they've had that job, and the third year even still. But still, that's a lot of money to fill a position that, in three years, then it goes away, then we're back to where we started, where we are now, basically. So if there were an opportunity for them to give us a, some ideas to how we're going to keep that position going, that would be more in favor of it. It's a great position. I can see where it, there's a need for it. Um, but I do have some problems with it, obviously. And the other one is the three county fairground. It just sounds to me as though they're 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 walking a fine line between historic preservation and um, making it a functional structure. And I would have to defer to people that know more about historical preservation um, in that regard. There's a 
a lot of money being spent down there, and there's going to be a lot of money being spent down there. Does it necessarily? Be, I would try to put a, a square peg into a round hole when it comes to it falls under the historical criteria. Um, Sawmill Hills, if the, it's there, it's definitely it's on the same way, kind of low on the totem pole. Um, playgrounds are low. And is that it? Uh, it's open space acquisition. Mm -hmm. Christopher Heights. Christopher Heights is confusing, but uh, the numbers that they put out make a lot of sense in regard to cost per unit. Mm, that's for sure. It's short money, so to speak, with what the projections are. So I'm here with that. And the point that is just yep. Dave. Um, so rec uh, fields. Uh, as for I am concerned that the Lampin Park is a little bit of an add-on and not particularly coordinated with the school. It's not clear what the vision is other than putting lines on the ground and putting up a fence for what that park will look like. So it's kind of going blind, a little bit like the last park, but without the planning concept. But I also feel like they secured heck of a lot of money from the state. And it's, I mean, it's not a, not a sizable amount, but it's a reasonable amount for us to be spending where we know there'll be a dividend. And the community cares about that area. So if it is complimentary, <coughs> maybe that's OK. Um, Bridge Street School, I am in favor of, but I would like to see some other work out to issue with this city mm. leaving the snow on yeah. something we're going to be spending $200,000 on. Yeah, is there a condition there that can we, is that appropriate or is that overstepping our authority to add the snow removal? Mm. Yeah. Certainly, certainly we can ask for it. And again, the city clears snow from many, many places. They clear snow from parking lots for revenue. They clear snow from streets to make them passable. Why they wouldn't think that this is a priority and I mean, they clear the parking lots of Northampton High. They could tell the kids, high school kids, just to walk in far away that they can't do that. So I'm not sure why this is a different situation and why it couldn't be negotiated. Are you plowing in there or are they, are they uh, using a loader? They use a, they use well, a loader. Well, they, huh? yeah, I mean, they, they must use, use a loader. Those are huge piles. Yeah, they push the snow. That was, I was, I don't know if you all caught this, but the leaving. design had this, this wonderful uh, innocent looking set of barrier tables and benches between the playground and the and the driveway parking lot, uh, the, the, thereby preventing the plows from pushing the snow up onto, the, onto this new playground. So I thought that was pretty clever. Uh, <laughs> and I don't know if the DPW had seen that or yet or not, but it, they, they'd have to use a loader to get it over the over the. That's time. not where they're putting the snow. They're putting the snow on the basketball court, which is the oh, oh, oh the okay, all right. So I mean. It's a hazard for kids to be. So this would still be open even. It melts, it freezes, it melts, it freezes, which is bad for the asphalt. And we had the same issue with the river when they were at the road park and they wanted to go in after the fact on the newly constructed paths, asphalt paths to put heavy machinery. It just doesn't make any sense. So that would be my condition there. And I'll think about that a little more. So on the hills, not a priority for me. Not clear what acquisitions we're having in around that area. And it's a matter of doing business for all of our properties anyways. And so that's the lowest of priorities. And it was the lowest of planning department's priorities. Open space, I'm going to reserve judgment until I go out and meet plan a site visit. I think everyone wanted to agree. She hasn't agreed that she wants to sell it to the city. Does that make a difference? Uh, fairgrounds, I share everyone's concern. I feel like the compromise there is, you know, it feels like it's a very expensive feasibility study for something that doesn't fit within the historic, except the only addition they made to their application was to actually add in the historic design. Mm -hmm. So if they want to spend $50,000 to do a seating upgrade, my compromise might be, you know, we'll give you the 4400 bucks for the historic person and you report back what the historic nature of this facility is. There's no guarantee that they're going to keep it either. They might knock it down and we would spend 50 grand to find out that we're knocking down something that's actually really valuable. Uh, Christopher 
for Heights. Uh, it was a good project. I like the project. I feel like they've gone before the state twice and haven't been successful. I think we ponied up what we were asked to pony up. And I don't think provided anything convincing to show that the costs have escalated to the extent that we should do more than uh, double our commitment. And that can, I'm somewhat bothered that the city pulled its tip, regardless of whether it was favorably viewed by the state. If this is a worthwhile endeavor and it's something that the city wants to retain, that 5% or something more seems appropriate when we're getting 13, 18, 20% to Cole Morgan and Coca Cola to keep in there. Um, so I don't know what I'm doing with that. I don't want to lose the project, but I also know that we have other similar projects that were proposed for this round, that were withdrawn, and we have other affordable housing things to come down the pipe. And I feel like our commitment is there. So, uh, what's next? Uh, support of service project. I like the project I see the need. I think is really important. Uh, I'm more concerned about the structure and ensuring that the services will be delivered and the <coughs> concerns that have been raised already and that one, we have a definition for support services that needs to go to the entity that actually owns or manages housing. And so that was an issue that we tabled so we can see the proposal. I think we need to talk about that. And that I would be I would have much more comfort if one of the organizations that spoke in favor of this came forward as a co sponsor saying, We want to take it on, we have the people who supervise whoever this person is who's coming in, we want to contribute overhead, we're gonna make this successful as opposed to going out to bid without knowing what the parameters for the bid package are. Is this the lowest price? Is there qualifications? What are the qualifications? It seems like it's the actual people doing the work are three steps removed from the CPO money, which leaves me uncomfortable. And it's a large amount of money. The, you know, the way they broke it down, it came out to the fact they might be able to help 20 to 24 families each year, which is a lot if you're one of those families. And I, you know, I think the services are essential, but it comes out to about $2,000 a family in terms of services. If it's more like 40 families or 50 or 60, then I feel like it's a bang for the buck. But for something that's experimental and we don't know who's doing it, that, I have a tension that I have unresolved at this point. Where did you get the 24 a year? That was during our presentation. Yeah, it was. Oh, I'm sorry. Right, did I miss one? Nope. No, that's it. Um, I just want to get the lawyers. Uh, so we've been reading the support of community housing to require that the money be given to organization um, that operates or manages such housing. But looking at this, support of community housing shall include, but not be limited to, programs that provide grants, loans, rental assistance, security deposits, interest rate write downs, or other forms of assistance directly to individuals and families who are eligible for community housing, or to an entity that owns, operates, or manages such housing for the purpose of making housing affordable. So when I read that, the programs that provide grants, that, that's, right, modifying the programs that provide grants, but <coughs> it begins with shall include but not be limited to. So it seems to me that that definition is wide open. Like the, the, the first shall include but not be limited to, that's not modified by organizations that provide or manage housing. So <coughs> in this case, I think that the legislation gives us, at least the text of legislation wouldn't restrict us, regardless of who the money was given to. That was just, I just after rereading and reviewing it, I wasn't sure. But again, um, that's up to us as a committee really to decide whether it falls into it. Okay. Actually, why don't I start there? Because I read that and reread that, yeah. trying to really understand what it says, because this is a social work project. I understand that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very difficult to really understand how successful it's going to be. It's going to depend on the individual. It's a social work. I can go out and assist. And, you know, there are parameters. And so, you know, and, I mean, it's a couple hundred grand. I mean, you know, it's been already said before. You know, you, you give the money, six months later, you may have the person six months later, that person may finally understand the system. 
unless you know they already work in the system. And it could be a year before direct services are actually provided. There's seventy thousand or whatever. I mean, I, you know, and, and on the fiscal side of it, it's kind of a tough one. However, <coughs> on the reality side of it, it's really nice in order to keep a roof over some people's head, whether it's 20 families a year or whether it's 15 families a year, multiply that 45 families. It's like one of the most essential things that anybody can I mean, need to have. And so and what kind of value does one put on that? I mean, I know that everybody's sort of trying to balance these kinds of things. Now, I would prefer, if appropriate, if an organization came in and said, this is who I am, this is what we're doing, we're going to provide overhead, 10%, 17%, just give us the money to cover the cost, and within 45 days, we'll have this program up and running, and we're going to have supervisors, and we're going to be in the court system, and we're going to be working with the housing, blah, blah, blah. <coughs> That's not the case. This is a housing partnership. And if they haven't identified somebody yet, an agency, to come in and say, I mean, like, what have they been doing, is, is my question. I don't, I mean, and, and, and so that's sort of on that part of this. I like the project. It makes sense because it's an essential piece of the puzzle for maybe 100 families <coughs> over the next three years. And what kind of price you can put on Well, on the other side, what you can do is, you can set aside money to cover rent for <laughs> you know, I mean, and so anyway. Um, that's, those are the issues that I have on that. Christopher Heights, I like the project, I like the concept of the project, which is providing, um, you know, affordable housing to seniors. I mean, give me a break. That's going to be pretty significant. Uh, um, open space is open space. I mean, if you've got the money, let's buy it. If you're not going to buy it. Bridge Street Playground, sweet. I like that project. Very <laughs> smart. <laughs> <laughs> you know, playgrounds, floor and fields, play, yes, let's play. Sawmill survey, you know, if they need it and we've got the money, I mean, you know, they want 40000 I'll put that at the bottom. Um, grandstand is the qu I, everybody raised the same issues. I mean, if it is historic, you know, will help. But you know, I dread it. I don't need to hear what they have to say. I'm not convinced, but I can be convinced that people here say it really is an historic preservation. And uh, I guess that's it. Okay. Isn't that all? Of all right. Yeah. Can I go? Yes. Um, I just wanted to flesh out my, my comments on Christopher Heights from earlier. I, I do support it, and we'll, we'll vote for it. Um, because I think it's a, it's a great project, and it'll be good for its location. I think it'll be good for jobs for the city. Um, I think it'll be good because it will help the city address its required uh, percentages of uh, housing uh, for, for a lower income. Um, but I, 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 as I support it, um, I also want to say that it's, a, it's an unusual way to address a, a, this. I'm addressing from an ethical issue now, uh, an unusual way to address the low and moderate income housing issues of the city because you can take somebody who was earning quite a bit of money and very comfortable and with significant assets, real and otherwise, um, and with with a good tax attorney, uh, have that person five years later looking uh, uh, virtually penniless. And that's not much of a secret. Um, I think anybody with parents in nursing homes knows that. Um, and it, the result is that, that identifying who is, in fact, low and moderate income and who is low and moderate income by dint of tax accounting um, is, is very difficult. Uh, so we, we, I support this project wholeheartedly, but with the knowledge that, that 
and I hope we all can do this, that we may not, in fact, be really tackling, we should not pat ourselves on the head necessarily that much, because I don't, I don't know how much to the extent we're tackling the, the, the problem, the very real problem of housing for low and moderate income people in Northampton. Um, we're doing a nice thing. Uh, some of the people there will be low and moderate income, but we'll be definitely helping them. And there'll be some people who take advantage of this and conform to the standards of, of, of the, this project um, who uh, otherwise probably could be able to afford uh, this from, uh, from, their, from their trust. So it's just a, it's an editorial on my part, um, mostly to say to ourselves, you know, CPC, work harder uh, to uh, continue to support other kinds of low and moderate income because uh, this is this is nice, but it's probably not. It doesn't address the broader issue of you know, fam single parent families with you know, you know kids and and, and uh, who are really struggling against uh, the current and uh, you know living on the edge at all times. Don't have a lot to add. The housing supportive services, um, obviously, we know it's an important project, but the lack of follow-on funding is to start up the project and have run for three years. And what we heard tonight was the admission that there's there's no funding. So you know, my thought was usually when you have a project like this, where the seed money, it's a great idea, but everyone knows it's a great idea, and yet it's been cut. So it's hard to see where between now and years from now where somebody decides it's, wow, this essential thing that we're not doing, let's, let's start actually doing it. Um, Christopher Heights, to me, comes down to the unit cost um, of creating that housing. Um, I, I hear what Dave says about projects being the pipeline that may be important, but, um, but this one is here and Again, I'm not, I'm not sure whether they'll be any more successful in this round for low income housing tax credits, but if they are, it will be a very low unit cost for creating those units. Uh, the playground creation uh, at Lampton Park with Florence Fields with the substantial state funding seems like a good way to leverage our money. Um, and I, I do note that, again, it was one of these things where the grant application said fundraising and or CPA. And so again, it's, um, you know, I, I, I think that there will be a lot of people going to Florence Fields who will, you know, myself included, will benefit from the playground being there. So again, it's, we don't necessarily have to force them to come up with a certain amount of money, but to have applicants actually send a letter. I mean, obviously, Bridge Street has aroused enough excitement in the community. They've gotten $12,000 without even sending out the letter. So $12,000 is a pretty big piece of 50. So, um, you know, I'm not sure that affects the amount of, of what I would vote to award, but um, cer certainly conditioning it, conditioning it on making a fundraising attempt because there may be maintenance costs, there may be a, you know, additional costs that they don't anticipate would be nice to have reserved. Um, the survey, if we can afford it, I think it makes sense in terms of doing something now to avoid costs later. I, I support the, the Rocky Hill acquisition, largely because I never understood the business park zone. Um, when, our, when our wetlands ordinance was amended, we pushed back development 200 feet from borough pools. Um, we, you know, we set these, in undeveloped areas, we set these 50 foot no disturb um, protected zones. But the business park, which is largely just undeveloped woods, was left off the table. And of course the idea was this is close to the Route 10 infrastructure, but when you begin to look at the property, the property has a lot of wetlands complexes, the property has burn up pools. Um, so it's not brown fields, I mean it's really green fields that we would be developing, and it's right across the street from already protected lands. So to, um, to protect this uh, piece seems important to me. I'm also, again, a little bit, um, our wetlands ordinance is also now, it's based on zoning. Whatever your zoning is on the map determines your level of protection. And the fact that the part of the business park was being moved into industrial, which has the lowest level of protection, um, you know, makes me think that we should, we should protect things you know, now because our zoning seems to be pretty malleable. Um, 
So I would, I would support that. And again, it will depend on whether the property owner wants to go forward with that sale. Um, again, I would note that um, in terms of Wayne Fiden's judgment about property purchases, that he, he was spot on with that one um, and got the second appraisal that talked the price down by a couple hundred thousand dollars. So um, I, tr I, trust, I trust his judgment in terms of the seminal piece of land at lowest cost. Um, the grandstand, again, I keep comparing it to the Northampton Community Music Center. Um, the music center is a nonprofit, and it but it you know charges people for lessons, um, and you know but it provides a lot of scholarship aid. And when we had the project to to basically save their foundation and waterproof their basement, it was very clear that we we delineated those parts where that were going to prevent the building from falling into disuse or become unusable because of water intrusion and mold issues. And all the stuff that they built out as part of their ongoing business of providing music education. What's never, what I don't see here is um, that absolute division between the ongoing business of the fairgrounds, which I you know, recognize the economic impact of the city, and just like people have said, the very narrow mission of historic preservation and structure. Right? Evaluation structure from a historic perspective um, and what we do to you know, not change the grandstand seating because that has nothing to do with, with historic preservation. That's for function you know, for, for the fairgrounds going forward. But, um, and I just note that the price tag is fairly high for a study that is not right. We're not going to get for if they if they tell us how to preserve the roof and the judges' um, boxes. They're, I can only imagine that they'll come back to CBC for a recommendation for funding for a significant portion, if not all, of that rehabilitation. So, um, so you know, again, comparing it maybe to the Academy of Music, where they were asking for $110,000 for a roof. For $110,000, you know, $110, you've got a new roof. Um, this is almost half that amount you know, just to decide what to do. So. So that's a, that's a difficult one for me. I want to, I, I want that historic structure to preserve, but I want to make sure that you know, we are investing in money wisely. And finally, um, Bridge Street School is a great project. The community is um, fully engaged. Again, I, I just lament, um, I lament that that I'm a school committee member for a school department that can't build playgrounds for its kids. Mm. Um, and that's not a comment on, you know, I, I take them at their word that we're not supplanting funding, that, you know, this, this recommendation and this award would be money that they would somehow find somewhere else. Um, but again, like the, you know, going back to the first, like the supportive services project, there are some things that I think used to be considered essential and natural parts of spending in a city that um, now are considered extraordinary expenditures. We'll have an opportunity to discuss the project one more time, right? Yes, yes. So we will now um, we'll get your ranking sheets. Can I ask um, one? Yeah. Again, forgive me for my ignorance about the um, Christopher Heist thing, but can someone just in a few sentences? So, so what does this money do? You've already given them 120. <coughs> it was for the TIF. We amended it, so they don't have the TIF. Now they want another 130. So what were, what does our 250 do? Construction costs have risen slightly since the project was first proposed because they, they weren't able to get started because they didn't get their low-income housing tax credit. Um, so there's been a small jump there, and also because there's no TIP, they're hoping that this additional commitment won't show how interested Northampton is in the project and make that those low-income housing tax credit applications successful. Yeah, it's, it's there's not a consistent percentage. I mean, the, the rise in the increase in costs was five hundred thousand dollars. So, so percentage-wise, you know, asking for 120 of a 14 million dollar budget or 13 million dollar, and now asking for another 130 out of 500, it's a much bigger percentage. It seemed the presentation when I took the presentation, other committee members can weigh in. Was just they decided, the city and 
the Grantham group that that was the amount they felt would win them the low income housing tax credits. Those, those are the prize. If they don't get those, the project doesn't go anywhere. If they get those, they go forward. So they don't get the low income uh, tax credits, we get 250 back. Yes. I can't, ima I can't imagine the project goes forward in other way. Thank you. Well, I mean, what we don't understand is, maybe you asked me, what was it when they went back to the state that made them less competitive than other applicants? Because the applicants are all across the board, low income housing for elderly, and there's lots of different projects, and the state has different priorities. So it may not matter how much we did, because they're always going to be outcompeted by whatever the superior is in the state. It may be that there's some other aspect of the project that the state doesn't like, irrespective of how much we do. And this seems to be kind of like a bring me another rock exercise. Well, they didn't like TIF, and they get something else. They don't like 120, bring us 300. Next time they'll come in and they'll say it's 500. And I don't know if there's no way to, to really know, but it really is just a another way of trying to cajole the money out of the state. Seems to be the I, did, I did look at the list of projects that were approved and there were quite a few that were by you know, things that had senior in the title. I don't know whether it was assisted living, but um, I think this is an area of need. And again, I guess it's up to them to decide. However, they've not done it successfully twice. So in terms of the application, it's been turned twice. So. I have one other comment about the community. I had not been bothered by the fact that one group had not brought this forward because, as Glenn said, any gr any group would accept a staff person. You know, they would they would. That's not the problem. So I viewed the way they were pro proposing to do this as sending out RFPs and having the players that know their business propose how to do it once they knew they had a budget to do it with, as a pretty viable way to go about doing it. Or whatever that's worth. So I wasn't bothered by the we don't know who it is yet because I think any of the it's would take it if we let them kind of thing. So that's just well, my thoughts on it. Yeah, it just seems that let's just like pick a service net. Yeah. The service net and the housing partnership are really interested in this project. They could make this project look a lot better. But service net would be interested in, in Hampshire, you know, I think yeah, the no, list of put would be long. And, and it would be interesting if they actually came up with an idea that leveraged whatever it is that we were going to be doing. I mean, this and picked up, you know, what's going to happen at the end of <coughs> yeah. this funding. So well, my that's worry, all. My worry was that be, there was a metric that you could, because other than coming back three years later, <coughs> if the three years gives them history that they can show without a doubt effectiveness, mm -hmm. And I think they are in a position to chase some other monies as well as ours. So, and they write grants all the time. So I think that's the, you know, that's what I, that's so are your points addressable through conditions that we might, you know, think? No, I don't think so. You know, because it would, it would like recreate the whole thing. I mean, they have, you know, a project. And, a, and I think what the statute says, they have a project. And so, I'm not going to play around with the project, uh, I think. <coughs> and this is real, pure, and simple social work. I mean, this is going out into the fields, into the relationships, home, education, networking, community support. This is in its purest sense social work. Keeping people off the street by educating them, training them, as opposed to giving them money. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, this, and so, like, what's the limits of benevolence? You know, I mean, that's another. Different topic. I was going to bring this up later, but it, given the discussion about the fairground building, there was a large article in the Glo in the Herald today about Suffolk Downs and the, this, this juggernaut of a rate of a casino that was going to be going into the Suffolk Downs uh, area, uh, just north of Boston. And 
apparently it's been held up because the Mass Historical Commission has determined the horse stalls, which are look which which look in the photographs to be almost identical to the horse stalls that were likely torn down. <coughs> there. That kind of disrepair yeah. too. That the horse stalls are of such historic significance that the entire casino juggernaut should be caught stopped dead in its tracks. Mm -hmm. um, and I say that because, and regardless of how, you, and this is not this is not a, an issue about how one feels about gambling, but it's an issue of, of how statewide, a very responsible state agency, MHC is a, is a very powerful and responsible agency, um, are looking at something as, as humble as the horse stalls that we are all familiar with from your walk around fairgrounds in the old days, um, are alone of such value that they would stop a project of that magnitude. Uh, you can imagine the steam that's, a, that's rising out of some certain sectors in Boston and Las Vegas right now, but um, uh, it, it does speak to the fact that people really do consider fairground structures to have a certain vernacular and uh, a quality and appeal that is, is hard to replicate. And certainly, I know we've for anybody who's lived here and driven down uh, uh, Bridge Street um, between the center of town and, and the river, we get used to seeing you know the, the, the fair structures and so forth. But in actual fact, if you know, look at Courier and Ives Prints, and, and and look, you'll see buildings just like what we have, and, and it's a it's quite a, it's a unique um, style of architecture that existed for a little while in American history. It was certainly very different than what would be put up nowadays. And um, um, you know, in the eyes of the of the Northampton Historical Commission, well worth preserving um, if uh, if the opportunity arises. But I also take your point about the cost of advice, and, and I will I will be thinking about your your comments. And, and uh, the fairgrounds hasn't gone through the Northampton Historic. No, they Commission? did. They can't. The the Historical Commission basically invited the fairgrounds folks to work with us on the issue. And um, they were open to that. They've not done so yet, but they indicated that they were open to do that. But the Historical Commission has indicated that it feels that the preservation of, of the, of the um, totality of, of the, the um, grandstand structure is a valuable um, a goal. and. Uh, uh, certainly would support in the effort toward the uh, preservation of that structure. I think there's less, um, there's no specific effect to for, for the, the seating arrangement. I don't think that was considered that, that salient, but the, the, the roof line, the, the, the general architecture of it, the structural support of it um, is, is, a, is a unique structure and unique to the city and uh, uh, to my knowledge, almost unique to the valley. Um, it uh, uh, predates uh, um, anything, I think, at, at, at uh, uh, Big E, uh, and uh, there might be something in, in, in uh, Great Barrington that uh, uh, has some similar dates to it, but it's an unusual, unusual structure. I thought you were going to say that predates the French and Indian War. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I try to your face there. And, and you know, are we done with the? We are. Because I have one, I have one important thing that actually uh, I do want to bring up that it con it's concerned me quite a bit. Um, I'm not sure how many of us were here for the discussion about the uh, First Church's um, uh, project. Uh, to which we gave something like a quarter million dollars uh, for the uh, work for work on the roof and work can on the interior. Can I just I just want to say because this is since it's not on the agenda, can we can we put this on the agenda for next time? Because I think it would be. I mean I I don't know whether we, we waited five minutes for you. I thought I was using up my allotted two more minutes. No no no. It's just that it, I mean just because it's not on the agenda and if people do want to weigh in on it, I would think it would be. I don't see it. I, don't, the no, I was not going to be proposing a motion. It's purely informational. But even informational, okay. it's, I mean, it's, if we don't have it, I mean, because this, if we're having a back and forth over it and then we later take action, I just want to keep it clean. So um, if you just want to tell people what they're proposing and then we can, that'll be it. Read the newspaper tomorrow. <laughs>
Oh, it's already, it's already, it's already out there. So. But, so if you want to put that down, uh, I think it would be. You were already quoted, so. Yeah, it's always quoted. Mm -hmm. You were already quoted saying displeased. Oh, no, no. no. <laughs> Before we adjourn, can I ask the status of the site visit? Like the individual is in search and she wants to tell us so we don't get to view the property that we're living on? Or? But it may be difficult to arrange a site visit like this. I can check, but it may be tough. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of money for a parcel that we're not allowed to have, so to view and what our procedure would be, whether or not that's something. I mean, I guess we can do it. I don't know what I would do in that circumstance, which seems unfortunate. Does Wayne one. have some detailed topo maps or anything that would hit, hit a medium in between? I'll see if a site visit can be arranged, and if not, then I'll get as much information as I can. Yeah, we can pose as <laughs> wealthy <laughs> investors. <laughs> we should know where that was. Maybe we couldn't trespass. <laughs> maybe we not, maybe not pose. Maybe I'm all for a bear suit. They're all out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, we should. I mean, we do have, the city does have total maps of it down to about five feet. So we have survey maps. We have GIS. But if you want to actually we'll lay eyes on it, we can see. But She might charge you two hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> so that being said, a motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor?